my little butterflies and this video is going to be my review on white fragility why it's so hard for white people to talk about race by robin d'angelo so you guys i read this book for the blackout buddy read which ended june 19th which is today as i'm recording but it will not po be posted today um i gave this book four out of five stars i really enjoyed this book like i really i listened to it i downloaded it off of libro fm please tell me if i'm pronouncing it right i listened I, I i really enjoyed this more than i thought i was going to enjoy it i find myself nodding in agreeing with her like mm -hmm, they so do do that and it just made me wonder when i was reading this i'm like i wonder if white people sit back and like think of like if they're reading this book or listening to this do they really sit back and think and be like wow i do that like i really do that i should stop that or if they're still defensive and argumentative like when we bring it up they're very defensive about it i wonder if they're the same way when they hear another white person say it so this book was written by robin d'angelo which is a white author for white people and she's directing everything towards white people she is coming at them left and right. She is bringing up every, like, little, from the smallest gestures of racism to the biggest fucking displays of it. And what I like so much about this book is that she's not just coming at other white people. She sits there and she brings out her own moments when she's been racist or when she says something remotely racist or even made a racist suggestion or a racist joke and she's called out herself about you know i've said this and i've done that and not realizing that i've done this she's even said there's times when she um her friend invited her to like a, a picnic or something at a park and when she walked up there was a group of black people um under one um tent or whatever and then it was a lot of black people and then it was a group of white people with little black people and she was just hoping that she didn't have to go to the group with the more of the black presence she admitted that that she got nervous when she realized like oh shit i might have to you know be with all of these black people and try to act a certain kind of way and then she felt relieved when she didn't it's just around people of her own peers so I like that she didn't just point the finger at other white people. She also pointed the blame at herself and accepted the shit that she's done and put it out there and be like, hey, I've done this too. So I'm not just saying it's wrong for you. I've done it too, but I've corrected myself. And she said there's still things that she said that she don't that she doesn't think is offensive at first. And then when somebody brings it to her attention, she doesn't automatically get clammed up and get defensive about it and feel like she needs to defend herself. She actually listens. And, you know, apologizing, like, I'm sorry I offended you. How can I do this better next time? I didn't mean to say this. I'm sorry that you feel this way. You know, I'm sorry I made you feel this way. So I like that part that she accepted her own blame, too, on her own part, which a lot of white people won't do. A lot of white people will point the finger at other black people and act like they've never in their life have done anything racist or, you know, I think that she identified with them. A lot of white people don't do that. A lot of white people like to point the finger at other white people and oh it's not me, it's those people. But I like that she did that. So I wanted to wait until I kind of got like complete control over the thoughts that I was thinking to try to make it as quick as possible. Cause I do, when I read a book, I, I make bullet I make bullet points and I, you know, I, I write little notes about, oh, I like that and such and such and such. So I was trying to get myself more collected before I did this video. And I was like, you know what? We just gonna go with the flow. We will just get it out there. Okay, so besides what I already said, I'm so happy that she brought up the acknowledgement issue with racism that a lot of white people don't acknowledge that racism even still happens or still exists. They act like it's something of the past, something that doesn't happen anymore because it doesn't affect them. And I like that she, that's like one of the first things that she brought up and I was like, yes, get that out of the way. That is like the main issue that y'all act like it doesn't happen. Like it's so rare and it's happening every fucking day. Her quote was, the failure to acknowledge white supremacy protects it from examination and holds it in place. And that brings me back to my whole point about just acknowledging. If you can just acknowledge that racism even still happens, that's a bigger help 
to the cause than you simply denying oh that doesn't that's not true and I'm not racist because I have two black friends so that means I'm not racist or I know a couple black people so I'm not racist I work with a white a black person and she's so nice and I love her and I've never been racist so like that's the kind of stuff y'all do and if y'all would just acknowledge it that makes sure that people can't hide from it if more people would acknowledge that it still happened when you deny oh this doesn't happen this doesn't happen you have a lot of people start to believe that oh it's not even a thing and it's it's so rare that it happens when it's so common everywhere like it's not just an isolated incident here or there it's everywhere and if more people would admit that yeah racism is still going on racism is very much alive you can get more stuff changed and fixed than denying that it ever happened. I also love that I almost died. I love that she called out like the people of other ethnicities like Irish people and German people, um, Italian people of white skin that claim that they can't be racist because their ancestors too were oppressed at some point in history so there's no way that I can be racist. I'm not like them. Yes, you can be racist because some of y'all Italians, y'all Irish people, y'all look down on brown skinned people too. So it's not just of, oh, you're an American white person. That's the only way that you can be racist. Just because you're of another ethnicity does not mean that you are excluded from being racist because our own people can be racist as well. They're, they are. Like our own black people are racist toward their own culture. We have a lot of black people that are fucking darker than me that will swear to God, oh I'm not black. I'm not. And they will, they are, some of them are crueler than the fucking white people. And they'll tell you up front, oh I'm not black. I'm not, I don't, I'm not one of those niggers. And I've heard like black people like saying this shit and I'm like you know you are darker than most of us in this room and they feel like they're not black they're white oh I grew up with white people and I'm white I'm not I don't they look down at other black people so to say that oh well I'm not an American white person like I'm my my ethnicities of another of another country that doesn't mean that you cannot be racist because you can even if you're not blunt and be like oh I just hate black people certain stuff that you do like racist gestures you don't have I think a lot of people feel like being racist is just using the n-word or or just like being outright racist because a lot of y'all hide it but I think people feel like a racist is just one of those people that you see on one of the slave movies oh that's racist like no baby you can be racist and be undercover with it too so I don't know what y'all picture in y'all head when y'all think of a racist person, but it can be anybody. Nobody is excluded. And then there was times throughout the book where I kind of felt puzzled. Not in a bad way. Like still, like it just hit me like, damn, like how can people, like I just still just don't get how you can think like this. She brought up how, how white people talk about race without actually talking about race. Like they'll associate a bad neighborhood with oh that's black people that's a lot of black people in this neighborhood so it's a bad neighborhood so it's like i don't understand how can you even associate the two how does a lot of black people in the neighborhood mean it's a bad neighborhood like even to this day i just i can't wrap my mind around certain fucking like these stigmatisms that y'all pull out like so if it's a group of black people over here that mean we're up to no good or we're about to do something we don't have no business versus this group of white people over here just because it's a white neighborhood don't mean it's a better neighborhood than this black neighborhood because a lot look i'm telling y'all black people are very hosp hospitable you don't even know your neighbor but they barbecuing and they're like oh you want a plate like friendly as fuck so for y'all to say it was a lot of black people that mean it's it's a bad neighborhood i just still cannot wrap my mind around it i just don't I don't understand the thinking behind that still. It's like, I get it that you just looking at the color of somebody's skin and y'all think all black, people, all black people are like that, but I just don't I see the association with the two. Like, I don't see how they go together. Like, I'm just, I'm mind fucked on stuff like that still. And I'm 24 and I'm very aware of what goes on in the world, always have been, and it's just, it still fucks my head up that that's how y'all associate stuff the same way that y'all associate ghetto with being black like no baby just because you're black doesn't mean you're ghetto ghetto is just ghetto that's that don't have a skin color so don't automatically be like oh black people are ghetto because this whole fucking year has been ghetto as shit to me okay it has nothing to do with a skin color 
I just, there's just stuff like that that fucks my head up. Like still, like who came up with this shit and how? Then one of the things I thought that was interesting that she brought up, because I wasn't expecting this to be brought up, because you don't see a lot of books even like grow this far and bring this up, the lack of diversity, and I say that with air quotes, the lack of diversity within educational material, you know, as in black authors, black, you know, model representation, period. Like in your, in like textbooks when you have these, the, these people acting out a scene or whatever is going on in the textbook, they're mostly white people. It's rare that you even see black, black models in the book. You don't hear, a, even, they don't teach you about a lot of black people, educational wise at all. Like the most that you're going to learn <laughs> about black people and history and, you know, science, which is a little bit, is when they do the section in, um, in school, it's like maybe two or three chapters. They go through slavery, um, the reconstruction era, and then that's about it. And whatever people they talk about in those sex in those chapters is all you gonna learn about black people. The rest of the whole school year, and this is maybe two weeks, maybe two weeks. You learn about the that little bit of black culture. The whole rest of the school year is nothing but white people. So it's kind of like you have to teach yourself. And I like that she touched on the lack of a fucking brown skin in educational in educational material. I feel like. In this day and age, I feel like every school should have an African American studies class. Like, I, even if it's voluntary and you have to sign your child up, it, it's, if it's optional, I feel like every school should offer that as a class where you just learn about African history. That's all you learn about. Because our history is not just slavery and then getting our rights to vote. Our history started way before slavery, but you don't learn about any of that. You have to kind of find that on your own. I'm still learning about people that was before slavery. I'm still learning. I learn something different every day about my culture. And it's like, damn, why don't they teach this in school? So it's kind of left on us to teach our own kids our own culture. And it's like, you're learning while you're teaching them. And it's like, wow. It's like we have so many fucking intelligent people in our history and culture that we know nothing about it's insane we just have so many fucking scientists and brilliant fucking inventors and doctors and nurses and amazing fucking travelers that went all fucking over the world kings queens that led just oh my god so many amazing fucking civilizations that had so many great runs like we know nothing about like we didn't get taught any of that but we know about every white person that has created anything but they let out so many great inventors of black people that has helped make America what it is and it's like wow like I feel like every school should have an African American uh, history class that's for each grade level, you know, cater to that to that grade level. Even if it's an optional class, I feel like that is something that's very beneficial. And I don't mean not even just for our culture. I mean, you don't know that much about Spanish fucking history. They should have that as a class too. Just like they want you to take a foreign language, they should have it's time for you to learn fucking Spanish heritage. And it shouldn't just be that one month of. Uh, the Heritage Month, more Native American history, they should do Italian, we should learn about every, they should give every child a chance to learn about their culture, not just white people. Because at the end of the day, America was made, was not made by white people. Like, y'all cannot sit here and honestly say that America was built on the back of white people. You can't. Black people did all the work and we get called lazy. When they built the fucking economy, 80% of the economy was based on slaves. Was based on slaves doing the work. And we get called lazy. We get called because we want we want our 40 acres in a meal. We, it's a handout. Why should they give us something? Bitch, it's not giving us something. Our ancestors worked for free for 150 years getting beat. Worked for free. And then when you did have to start paying our ancestors, you paid them the bare minimum. And could take it away whenever you wanted to. And it's just like, 
that's I was reading White Rage and I just was starting to get so upset while I was reading it. Not at the author, just at the fact that how can you fucking treat our people like that? Like how can you? Like I was really getting hot. Like I was giving, I was donating plasma. And I was waiting for my husband because I finished before him. And I'm just reading and I'm just getting hot. Like my legs start shaking. And I'm like, how the fuck can you treat people like this? That people that did not ask to come to this country. People that you rode up to their country and stole them. And dragged them to this country to build your country for you. Which isn't really your country because you stole it from the native people. But we're not going to get into that. Like how can you t how can you treat them like this as if they asked to come here? As if they came here on their own. You bought them here in chains. And that's how you treat them as if we asked to come here. And even now when people oh, go back to Africa. Bitch we never asked to leave Africa. You can't tell me to go back to somewhere I've never been. Born and raised in America. So I can't go back somewhere I've never been. You took that option away from me when your ancestors took my ancestors from our country. So don't tell me to go back somewhere that your ancestors shouldn't have took us from. Okay? And it's just, I got so upset while I was reading that book because I just, I don't see how a whole nation of people can be on one accord in agreement with treating people like this. Because as black people, black people have no problem doing work. But we want to get paid and treated like fucking human beings. So, I stopped reading Right Rage because I needed to calm myself down. Like certain books, like certain movies, even movies like that I can't watch because I get, I get pissed off, I get upset, and I want to fight. And then I look, at, I look at white people funny for a long fucking time. So, I try not to watch stuff like that because I know how it's going to get me. So, I had to calm down. And that's why I didn't finish White Rage on time. I had to take a couple of days off to just be like, I need a break from this book because I'm getting pissed the fuck off. And it, it's like, even now, all of these years, centuries later, I'm still just sitting here thinking like, I can't believe they treated my ancestors like that and then want to treat us any kind of way still and then get mad because we want to be treated like human beings. Like, they treat animals better than they treat us. Like, y'all understand... If a video goes viral of somebody killing a cat, because I saw that and I almost threw up. Whatever country they was in, it was just they just stomped this cat to death. They just kept stepping on it and stepping on it, and it just people will they will march the fuck for animal rights in a second in a heartbeat. You know how many bills for animal rights would get passed like this, but. Black people just want to be treated as humans, like everybody else, and we get all of the backlash, we get all of this, oh, we can't do this, and we can't do that, and it's taking years to get a, a bill passed for this, uh, and just to be human, just to not be killed in a, in a traffic stop, it takes forever to get bills passed for stuff like that, but if an animal, something happened with an animal, y'all outraged today, next week there'll be a bill being signed about a new animal rights act. Do y'all understand that? That y'all will can't believe when people treat animals bad. Which I mean, trust me, I'm on the same page. But y'all jump and shit like that. But when black people just want rights as an American to be treated right and not to be treated like trash. Oh, we're being whiny. And oh, that's not happening that way. Oh, you gotta see both sides. Oh, all lives matter. Come on now. Now, if you get more upset over an animal getting killed on a video and not a fucking person, you need to look at yourself. But, all together, I enjoyed listening to White Fragility. I really enjoyed, I enjoyed listening to White Fragility. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I would recommend this to people because I think this was an amazing book. And I feel like this is a book that all white people should read or listen to. And just have an open mind. Don't be defensive while you're reading it. Just listen to what she's saying. And you'll see. You'll be like, oh, yeah, I do. I do do that. And then she explains herself. And you're like, okay, I see where she's coming from. I can do some changes to myself. All white people, including the white people that want to be allies to us. Y'all should read this book. Y'all really should. It's not a book bashing, y'all. It's a really fundamental book. Okay? Now, speaking of this book, like I said, I listened to it from um, Libro FM. 
they sent me an email which I'm sure they probably sent to everybody that bought this book they gave me a free copy it's a of course it's the e-copy it was the audiobook copy of them but I have to send it in an email link to someone and the link is only good I think until the 29th so I'm, I want to give it I want to do a giveaway cuz I mean I don't want it to just sit in my email and then it goes away to trash so I am I want to do a giveaway this is like my first giveaway um yes I'm gonna be that fucking person uh, to get my subscribers up you have to be subscribed to my channel to participate in this giveaway you have to like this video you don't have to share it it's optional I'm gonna try to set up like a raffle copter thing and so I'll put that link down below to where you do the different things and you get you get added um entries to the giveaway and I think I'm gonna run it at least well, I would say for a week, but I want to have enough time for us to be able to, for me to be able to share the link with you, and you can download it before the 29th, because after the 29th, it's not even gonna be, it's not gonna be available, the free giveaway. So how Libro FM works, I don't know if you had to necessarily make a subscription for this one because you download the app, but then you also are gonna have to create an account online. You're gonna have to go online and create a username and a password and all of that kind of stuff. It is, you pay a monthly fee, I think it's like 14 something a month. It's $14.95 or something like that a month that you pay. You get a book credit and you get one free book credit every month and then the rest of the month, all of the books are 30% off for you to buy any other books that you want that month. Now I don't know if you have to set all of that up because it's a free copy for me to give to you. So I don't know if you need if you have to set up a whole subscription. Oh, and your first your first month is free. So I don't know if you need to set all of, if you have to set all of that up beforehand to get this or not. But either way, your first month is free, and I'm sure you could cancel it before the next month subscription if you decide to. So, like I said, major thing is you have to be subscribed to my channel and you have to like this video. Also, if which is optional, leave a comment below telling me if you read White Fragility already or if you think it would be a fundamental book for people or do you think it's just not going to do any good? Because I think it'll be a good read for a lot of people. you would be able to see it from someone else's perspective. So, yeah, make sure to check my description for the Raffle Copter link. Raffle Copter link um, is going to be the first thing. If I am able to figure it out, it's going to be the first link in my description box. So, yes, people, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Bye. Mm -hmm.